India possesses an enormous array of incredible ancient architectural accomplishments. Mind-boggling feats of ancient engineering, many of which continue to mystify modern explorers and elude modern understandings. Exquisite details displaying prodigious artistic abilities and accuracy. Ancient stone carvings, which seem all but impossible, yet here they are for all to see. We have in the past explored many of these sites. We have explored the similarities in tool marks found at other sites all over the world. The now lost methods which were utilized to once carve entire temples from a single block of bedrock. We have also investigated the many temples constructed from quarried stones, temples which possess columns seemingly created on lathes, yet many of these pieces weigh in excess of six tons. Just how these feats were accomplished remains a complete mystery. And our next architectural anonymy is of no exception. According to mainstream academics, Virabhadra Temple was built by the brothers Varana and Varupana, which were governors under the Vijayaranga Empire during the reign of King Achutaraya within the 16th century. Located in the village of Lepakshi, a significant place in the great Indian epic Ramayana, legend has it that the bird Jatayu, wounded by the king of Lanka, fell here after a feudal battle against the king. When Rama reached the spot, he saw the bird and said compassionately to him, Lepashki, meaning Arise Bird in Telugu. Although the temple is claimed as the work of said brothers, just like that of many other incredible, inexplicable sites throughout the world, any explanation as to how they achieved this incredible feat remains elusive. Additionally, there is one feature in particular which not only remains unexplained, but its past purpose, or perhaps more importantly, how this feature was successfully created remains unknown. Known as the Hanging Pillar of Lepachki, it is a column which initially appears to be a weight-bearing structure. However, on closer inspection, one discovers that this column is in fact set aloft, with its significant weight somehow being dispersed along the temple's roof. It is as if the builder of said temple created the column as a statement, a display of their incredible abilities and architectural skills. The column seemingly serves no function other than to display the capabilities of the temple's builder. It is as if they were simply showing off. Furthermore, along with a past purpose remaining elusive, just how the temple's inner structure actually supports the weight of the column is also an unknown. How can one be expected to believe that a temple such as this, located among many of India's other astonishing ruins, one which possesses clear displays of complex, advanced, and in-depth understandings of load-bearing architecture, along with the majority of its existence currently unexplained, was supposedly built by one of our well-studied ancestors a mere 500 years ago? How can one accept this as a logical explanation for its origins? The Hanging Pillar of Lepashki is clearly an incredible work of ancient engineering, one that, although claimed as the work of known ancestors, remains largely unexplained. It is a temple which we find highly compelling. We have, in the past, covered numerous seemingly impossible ancient feats of ancient engineering found throughout modern-day Japan. Polygonal stonework of gigantic proportions, ancient forts and temples, which we have previously distinguished, were constructed upon far older and now inexplicably mysterious masonry techniques, the most abundant of which we have come to know as polygonal. Yet, alas, due to the explanation as to how this was achieved remains elusive, thus the site is dismissed and deliberately overlooked. As such, the absence of any logical explanation as to how said sites came into being, or even how this stonework was once achieved, means that not only are these sites suppressed from mainstream attention, but the seemingly impossible features still in existence are instead of being exposed and admitted as unexplainable accomplishments, thus allowing those with a critical capacity to pursue said origins 
we feel, are instead avoided, compelling proofs of our posit of their having once been advanced, now yet lost civilizations, which once flourished and often seemingly suddenly vanished, have indeed been and gone on our planet. The suppression of this truth gives motive to academia, who attempt to cover up such realities. Yet, regardless of the defining purpose for this conspiracy, whether to avoid mass panic or not, we feel, it is not a valid enough excuse for this suppression. And in our opinion, we feel, regardless of public reaction, we all deserve to be presented with the true reality of these ancient sites, and indeed, a true account of our history. Tucked away within rural Japan is a megalith known as Ichi no Hoden. At first glance, this particular megalith looks as though it is floating in mid-air. The reason for this is due to the civilization's abrupt departure. As such, the stone has not been completely liberated from the bedrock it is still attached to. Clearly, at the final stage of excavation, the stone is literally hanging by a thread. And due to the location of the excavation, and the fact that the stone itself has protected its base from erosion, the megalith has remained attached to this small seam of rock for untold millennia. The defining reason for why we attribute the stone to a now lost civilization is its sheer size, measuring an impressive 5.7 by 6.4 by 7.2 meters. The stone also weighs an estimated 500 tons, meaning that the techniques, or indeed the technology used to cut and transport the stone, remains an unexplainable feat of ancient engineering. Largely dismissed by academics the world over, these gigantic stones, however, are a legacy that due to their immense size, is likely to still be present here on our planet, far after our own civilization has been and gone. Additionally, just like the many other sites which we have successfully identified within Japan, as the work of a now lost civilization, a temple was later built at the site. And although attributed to a civilization within permitted timelines, the megalith has been believed to be holy and has been venerated since ancient times. According to mainstream study, which although not publicized, were literally forced upon academic institutions as they continue to attempt to appear transparent, all the while actively avoiding the task of explaining not only who and when this stone was cut by, but how this ancient civilization was intended to transport said stones to their final locations. The official version is, predictably, a claim that the rock was intended to be a tomb. However, just as we would have expected, there is no scientific information as to who quarried the stone, or indeed what intentions they had for its eventual purpose. Who cut the Ishinohoden megalith? How did ancient civilizations move such gigantic stones, sometimes thousands of miles? We find the Ichinohoden megalith highly compelling. Alex Putney over at humanresonance.org has, for a number of years now, been unraveling some rather startling secrets. Secrets surrounding Nikola Tesla's free energy technologies and the systematic suppression thereof, and seemingly deciphering a number of astounding ancient discoveries, all of which strongly indicating once highly advanced knowledge of sound waves, resonance, and indeed levitation of extremely large weights. Coined as the, quote, piezoelectric basins by Alex himself, it seems he, along with a number of other researchers' exhaustive efforts, have discovered some compelling and intriguing characteristics of many ancient ruins which litter most of Egypt, dotted along the banks of the Nile. We have, in the past, touched upon the possibility of sound resonance having been a factor in Edward Leedskalen's mysterious and secretive construction of Coral Castle which can be found within Florida. Many believe that Edward somehow unraveled the secrets to the pyramids, and in doing so, was able to recreate his own rudimentary resonance machine, enabling him to lift enormous weights with relative ease. As our knowledge of our environment and the mysteries of our ancestors deepens, especially regarding their once mystifying and astounding knowledge of construction, left to ruin in many areas of the world, Accepted as having never had access to heavy machinery, 
we must look elsewhere for our answer as to how these weights were moved. An outspoken local wisdom keeper of the Giza Plateau, Egyptologist and tour guide Abdel Hakim Ayan, has brought very controversial but extremely compelling knowledge to bear regarding profound implications of these astounding ancient constructions. Hakim's provocative commentary on the misconceptions of modern academics was broadcast in The Pyramid Code, a documentary produced by Dr. Carmen Bolter, professor at the University of Calgary, a documentary well worth investigation. It reveals several insights, including the advanced nature of the psychoacoustic and biorhythmic effects of these ancient Sanskrit monuments that he claims have all been falsely attributed to the Egyptian civilization. Part of his testimony is as follows. It must be noted that due to Abdel's intimate knowledge of the Giza Plateau, he should undoubtedly be perceived as a reliable source of avenues for alternative esoteric research. He claims that in 1936, while the Sphinx was still covered up to the neck in sand, there were tunnels he personally explored. Claiming that, past the Abu Ghraib, a crystal altar was found, containing a round disc in the middle of four radial lines, a symbol of Hotep, Hotep meaning peace and food. This round disc was a lid on a shaft, about 180 feet deep to the level of the ocean where he claims there is still running water, and there is still, quote, much more to be found. Although academia would like you to believe they possess a detailed, complete history regarding the construction of Easter Island, just like any other seemingly impossible site found around the world, any explanation as to how these supposedly documented events were indeed undertaken remains absent. We recently postulated that much of the ancient ruin that is Easter Island, and perhaps the most impressive features still to be found upon the island, are more than likely buried beneath past landslides once caused by rapid deforestation. And as predicted, with this realized and archaeological excavations commenced, we soon knew just how deep this ancient sediment actually is, and as such, the controversial discoveries began to surface. Not only are there ancient Moai statues, stretching into the hundreds of tons of weight dotting the island, but how these were moved into position is knowledge lost to the chasm of history. However, although academia would like you to believe that these tasks were completed within the last thousand years, the evidence of a past advanced civilization actually having been responsible, is all over the island. After shallow excavations were undertaken around Anahu, one of the many ancient ceremonial platforms, polygonal masonry, uncannily similar to that found within Giza, Peru, Bolivia, and indeed all other as yet unexplained sites around the world, was indeed unearthed. An additional piece of evidence we feel may one day help to eventually unravel the mystery of not only Easter Island, but many other ancient sites around the world, is in its past title. Once known as the Navel of the World, it is interestingly one of many. A number of other ancient sites, thanks to our own more modern ancestors, retain their ancient titles as navels. Were these ancient civilizations somehow able to tap into a mysterious energy grid that can be found crisscrossing our Earth? It is undeniable that many of the most ancient sites found all over the planet can be found located upon purported ancient energy lines. Were these placements a mere coincidence? Were they placed there for another reason? Or were they indeed tapping into an energy field? which allowed them to shift such weights. Chipito Chenua is an intriguing artifact that can be found upon the island. With such an extremely well-preserved, untouched history found upon the island, Chipito Chenua is still remembered as an artifact once used by ancient elders, used to summon something called mana, which interestingly translates as earth energy. These elders then inexplicably use this energy 
to float multi-ton statues across the coastline, placing them in their final resting places. Are all these connections, artifacts, and historical accounts mere coincidence? Or are we truly on to something? Only time will tell. There exists a smorgasbord of imaginative theories pertaining to the original construction of many ancient sites found all over Earth. Egypt's Giza Plateau being the melting pot and often the site of initiation for many an astute researcher. A realization of not only the megalithic anomalies, but also the academic ignorance. As we have previously mentioned, a discovery first shared here upon our channel, enormous granite stones exposed on the east side of Cheops. has not only revealed the size of the original blocks, but the extensive erosion upon them. This fact is a highly controversial piece of evidence. The stones, which are clearly more modern casing stones, conceal what were already highly eroded blocks, masterfully covered later on in their lives. It confirms our claim that they were a conservation effort, vindicating our claims of immense age and revealing academia's ignorance to not only be deliberate, but possibly conspiratorial. As technology has advanced, it has allowed for many theories to be tested on computer programs, by testing real-world tensions and stresses, allowing us to weed out the ideas that would have been simply impossible. The most interesting outcome of this so far is undoubtedly the theories surrounding cracks in the weight-bearing blocks in the Grand Gallery. Computer simulation has shown that these blocks easily withstand the weight above. So, to have cracked at some time in history, a substantial additional weight was added. And although many of these same academics are now convinced that this was some form of counterweight, we know that these enormous, presumed weight-bearing blocks are not the only ones to be found within the structures. These enormous stones have rendered many theories regarding the original build as incomplete. However, there exists a theory which seemingly fits not only for the placement of the casing stones, but also the mysterious semi-crushed Grand Gallery. Khufu's ship, a vessel we have covered in the past, found masterfully dismantled and placed in order of its construction at the base of the Grand Pyramid, has been found to possess some intriguing features. Author and researcher Itzvan Soros puts forward this highly compelling hypothesis concerning the many unusual characteristics of the Khufu ship, and indeed their connection to the movement and placement of the casing stones which we see today. This theory involves the flooding of the Nile to accomplish these placements. This would explain the unimaginably immense weight that the pyramids clearly once experienced, and the cracks within the gallery blocks. Itzvan goes into detail, explaining that much of the boat could have been repaired and replaced at ease, and most interestingly, that it could be deliberately flooded at will. Even recognizing and explaining their unusual docking stations found all along the shores of Sakura. Did the Khufu ship really have something to do with the conservation stones found upon the great monuments? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling.